Hello, my name is Jared Logan. I'm the executive director of Makehaven, and I'm here to do a little video as an orientation for new members. So just to start, Makehaven is a nonprofit organization. We have uh, around 150 members, probably more by the time you're watching this video. And our mission is just to help educate and empower those members, particularly when it comes to uh, technology and making things. We're really part of a larger makerspace movement uh, and a network. And we love the fact that the, uh, the internet and information technology has allowed us to share projects, activities, watch things on YouTube, and then create them locally. And it's so much more fun to do it together. And we endeavor to have the, the machines that basically allow you to fabricate almost anything. Uh, and so we are both a makerspace and a fab lab. Uh, access to the space is 24-7. So you'll get a, a small RFID card, and that card will allow you access. We are able to track. We're able to see who's come in and out. So that gives us an additional level of uh, security and understanding what's happening in the space. We do have security cameras uh, on location where we take a, a recording. So we put a tremendous amount of trust in uh, our membership. Uh, but we also like to, to verify what's happening and be able to, to have some amount of, of auditing there. Um, safety in a space like this is absolutely paramount. And we all have to look out for each other's safety and to make sure that we are uh, doing the sorts of activities and behaviors which will protect you and others. So do take note that uh, in both rooms there are labeled fire extinguishers. Uh, so know where those are. There's also an eye wash station uh, in a big green area, a big green box by the, uh, by the kitchen upstairs. And uh, be aware as you're using any of the equipment that it is a group of amateurs, of hobbyists, of people who are, are learning. So take an extra moment to make sure that the, you know, the blade on your tool is put in correctly, that the uh, equipment seems to be operating as it should. Uh, before you use it. And always, always, always use the appropriate uh, safety gear, such as uh, eye goggles and so on. Um, if you do find something that seems out of place, uh, something that you suspect could cause a, a risk to somebody else, absolutely put a physical sign on the tool so that nobody makes a mistake of uh, using that before we're able to uh, take a look at it and respond to it. After you put the sign on it, uh, be sure to post it to our any of our communication channels, email it to myself, post it to Slack, which is a uh, group communication uh, tool, uh, just to be sure that we're able to work and fix it. And because we, are a, we act as a co-op, we're a community, it is often the members of the community that are troubleshooting it, figuring it out, uh, and, and getting it to work again. There are some very specific safety rules around uh, our tools, and in particular, the wood shop. One is that we have a process of orientation uh, for all of the major tools. Uh, this is called badging, you know, sort of reminiscent of Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, where you've uh, demonstrated a skill and a competency, and therefore you, uh, you get the privilege of being able to, to use that tool. Uh, and I'll go into how you know what tools require badges it's listed on our website in the equipment section. Uh, in the wood shop, we also have some additional rules to, in addition to being checked out, uh, you have to, we have a buddy system. You have to have somebody within earshot who can, who knows they're looking out for you, who can respond in an emergency uh, if you are to have some, some incident arise. Now, of course, we're doing everything we can and we ask you to do everything we can to avoid an incident, but in the worst case, we want to make sure somebody's able to respond. Uh, also, do take note that we have first aid kits on the uh, top and bottom floors, you know, by the door in the basement and uh, against the back wall by the fire extinguisher on the first floor. Uh, and we have some posted, um, you know, need to knows about safety. Uh, in most cases, it really is about making sure you're safe first, then looking out for others and calling in the appropriate uh, authorities, whether that be the police or the, uh, the fire department. Um, we do allow guests 
So you can bring up to two guests uh, officially to be with you. However, they can't be the operators of tools that are uh, that have a badge requirement. Uh, they can be assisting you in all sorts of other ways. Uh, they do have to sign a waiver. Those waivers will be near the front door in a folder labeled guest waivers. And uh, that just ensures that they understand that they're doing this at their own risk, uh, that there are inherent risks involved in making and creating. And you as their, the member that's sponsoring them needs to be with them at all times and need to be uh, looking out to make sure that they are putting on the appropriate safety gear and doing those sorts of things. Uh, guests can be uh, children or under 18 if they're with their parent or guardian. Uh, individuals who are under the age of 18 and you're not their parent or guardian, unfortunately, just to uh, limit the uh, liability, uh, we are not allowing them to uh, be in the space at this time. Uh, aside from uh, the safety questions, there's also questions we have about how we all work together. So we're a lot of people in a big shop, things get messy. We really want you to look out for how do you leave the space in the best condition possible so that somebody can come in and use it after you. Uh, like when you go hiking on a trail and you're asked to uh, pick up the litter that you may find so that it's, it's better than when you came. Uh, we ask you to think about cleaning up your workstation, making sure you leave it better than when you came in. And through that, we'll all be able to uh, use the space, make things, and create what we want. One issue that we uh, are always looking for a better solution on, and as we upgrade into a bigger space, uh, we'll have more solutions for, is storage of projects. Uh, at the current time, we have a small area of the basement uh, in the back designated with a uh, bunch of little storage boxes. And we ask if you, you label your box so your name's really clear, you put your stuff in one of those boxes and put it down there as much as possible. We also have these things we're calling hot shelves where you can temporarily put a project and they're going to be cleared out on a schedule, but they're good for putting something overnight for a night or two. Uh, and if you must leave it out somewhere else, please just make sure it is labeled and dated. Uh, we can't take responsibility for items that are in the space. We do understand that when you're working on a project over a series of days, sometimes it's not practical to bring it back and forth, but we do have to balance uh, that need with the need of others to be able to use and access the space. And we certainly have uh, a lot of things and need to be careful not to accumulate too much. Um, events are a, uh, another important aspect of what we do. And I'm just gonna pop over now to the uh, website and show you that on this website, we have uh, a spot where you can go and see what is coming up. We try and offer a lot of free events to members. For example, this is one which takes members that have been with us for a little bit beyond the basics of the orientation. Um, we have meetups where we get just get people together to network and we may invite a wider community in. And then we have events like this one, which is sitting and talking with an entrepreneur, which is just a, a free community event where you're, you're accessing a, a resource. We may also have paid workshops from time to time. So keep an eye on these. Uh, we try and make them available to members. In addition to the specific events we have, we have a resource called Community Animators, and you'll find this under Resources and Community Animators. Now these people may change from time to time. Uh, you see there's a crew here of individuals, and they have special areas of interest and a schedule where they are going to be here. So the woodworking person might be here on Tuesday nights, and they'll be a person who can badge you, can show you how to use the cool tools, and check you out on those tools. They're also a person who can just be there to be your safety buddy, also to provide friendly advice. Uh, I encourage you also to reach out to them on our communication tool and make sure they're going to be there uh, and ask them questions and do them for the larger community. So you'll find those resources there. Um, as a member, you also have access to the member-only resources. These include a webcam, which is you can check what's happening on the space a file bucket, which is actually 
open to the internet, so don't do anything super secure on it, but you can drop files in there from home. They'll be there for a number of hours. You can pick them up at the space or move them between computers, kind of like a Dropbox. There's also a store. We have some items, though we don't want to be a retail area. There's some items just for member convenience or they're too difficult to get that we will resell to you. Uh, for example, thermal forming plastic or some acrylic on the laser cutter, and you can uh, buy them there. There's a link to the Slack chat. There's uh, a link for being able to manage your, the payments of your membership. There's also, and I find this one of the most important resources, a list of contacts. So on that page, when you register as a member, you've created a bio, and uh, you'll find that there are images, names, and descriptions for uh, people who are in the membership. So if you forget a name, it's useful to come back here and look, or if you want to do a project and you're looking for a team, you might look to whose interests align with your with your own. So that is the, the real core basics of our overview. Uh, I do want to put an emphasis on, you know, as a makerspace, we are really here to be able to help each other. Uh, we are here to teach each other, uh, to learn, and that's why we uh, spend time not only working with each other and having a friendly atmosphere, but we have resources such as this list of resources of tools, um, which is actually set up as a wiki. So if you go into the laser cutter, you see the important information that yes, the badging requirements are that you have the laser cutter badge and you can click through and get a primer as far as a video that then set you up to speak with the animator and get okayed. But we also have this long list of tips and tricks and settings and that is uh, managed and cared for by the community. They can go in and edit, and then of course there's revisions being tracked. Um, that's just one aspect of what is the community, the idea of helping each other and assisting each other and keeping that attitude. Many members hold little sessions educationally. Um, they post the projects that they do inside the community. And that often is done inside of Slack. I'll just take a moment to show you what that looks like. Uh, here you can see inside of Slack, which you'll be invited to as part of your onboarding, you might look at entrepreneurship and see that there are lots of different ideas around entrepreneurship. You might look at the laser cutter to follow the same example and see that people are posting that the lens crack, that there's uh, different things that they've figured out with anodizing metal. We might go into woodworking and uh, we have lots of different conversations happening about tools, ideas for projects, designs. Uh, this is all part of how we as a community help and support each other. So I encourage you to be active on Slack, active in helping each other. Uh, you can even create your own channel with this little plus sign here uh, to be able to create a new project and do something bold. So the community is all about um, tools that empower, habits that empower, uh, teaching each other, and having a good time doing it. So I welcome you to Make Haven. Uh, please do ask uh, questions of the members online and in person, and I look forward to making great things with you.